going to end up hurting you, your flesh. All right, let's keep reading. Now look, look at my verse 7 of chapter 3. By God's grace and mighty power, I have been given the privilege of serving Him by spreading the good news. Look, how do you serve God? By God's grace and mighty power. You don't serve God in your own power. If you try to do this ministry or serve God in your own power, you will fail, get tired, worn out, and walk away. See what he said? By God's grace and mighty power, I have been given the privilege. You realize when God, when somebody asks you to serve in a ministry, it's a privilege. Amen. And when you say no to it, you're just saying, I'm denying a privilege that God gave me to serve, and I'm not doing it. Imagine if Paul said that. He was in prison. Imagine if I'm all set serving you, Lord. i gotta, I got to do something at 10 o'clock. I can't make it tonight. <laughs> I gotta do something. I gotta be somewhere else. I can't make it to serve you. I gotta serve myself. Then you can go back and say, well, the doctrines of the Bible are really not giving me any kind of an experience because I'm not what? Denying myself for the benefit of the kingdom. Yeah. So it's doing nothing. I, under, I heard all the doctrines, but I can't practice them because I still have to take care of what I need to take care of. Amen? Amen? The doctrines create an experience as we walk this out. Look what it says. Look at verse 8. Though I am the least deserving of all God's people. Now, if you think that you're not worthy of serving God, look what Paul said. I am the least deserving of all God's people. He graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. You realize there's endless treasures available to you in Christ. Endless. You know, everybody wants to look for that buried treasure. And they think they're going to get it all in the world. The endless treasures are in the Word of God. They're in the book. Amen. They, you can go out there and try to get all the treasures you want and store up everything you want out there. It'll all come to an end. You go in here, they're endless. Amen. There's always new treasures to find in the book. How do I know that? Because I went out and did all that already. Yeah. Get the home, get the car, get this, get that, get... It all comes to an end, and to a responsibility, and it creates misery. <laughs> when I keep going into this, it starts creating a renewed spirit in me, and it starts giving me peace yes. that I can't get out there. Amen. I know when I'm hurting, and when I'm tired, that the Holy, that God's Word tells me, no, you keep going, John, don't quit. Yeah. You're going by my power, not yours anymore. Yeah. And then you find the strength to keep going. Amen. It's in the Word. Amen. It's in the promises of God. It's not osmosis. God says that I can do it. Amen. So now I can. I'm empowered by God. Not by my flesh. Now look what it says. Look at verse 9. I was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan of God, the creator of all things, and kept secret from the beginning. All the prophets didn't know this mystery of the church that he's talking about. God's purpose, look, he's going to say it right here, look. This isn't hard to decipher. God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom and its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authority in heavenly places. This is his eternal plan which he carried out through Christ Jesus our Lord. Now you see what it says? His wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers. Do you realize? There's a, there's a realm out there that we can't see. How do I know that? Where did evil thoughts come into your head from when you were trying to pray today or whatever? Where did they come from? Where did the temptations that knocked on you? Where did they, where did they come from? Because if we knew where they came from, we'd be able to say, nope, I ain't letting that in. I ain't letting that little think. You know when that little think comes on where something that's not good for you would just come? You couldn't deflect it. It, had, it got in. That's why we have an invisible enemy. Look, you can't fight this enemy without a spiritual thing because it comes when nobody's around. 
that little think, that little think of doing something that's not good for you. And if we what entertain it, mm. it'll give what birth to an action. Yeah. The only way to deflect it is what submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Amen. The powers in the Word of God say, "Look, I have the power to say no. Nope, I'm not. I'm not listening to that. Nope. See, here's the thing. You know the little voices you hear before Christ. God says, I got new voices for you now." Yeah. These are the new voices you hear now. You know, a little, I'll make it easy. The little angel and the devil on one side. And the angels telling you to do the right thing. And that little devil's got the pitchfork just trying to knock the angel off. Yeah. Well, here's how it works. When you renew your mind with the word of God, the angel knocks the devil off. Amen. But you have to renew your mind with this. Amen. Or else the devil's always going to win. Right. And you know what I'm talking about. When the devil tempts you, because whatever you sold out on, he comes back and he baits you up with it. Yeah. You know, whatever it be, whatever, whatever sins you might have fallen into, as soon as you come to Jesus, the devil tempts you even more with them sins. Yeah. Yeah. So you go back to him. And then you say, oh, this isn't working for me. Now which working for you? Because now you have an awareness of it. Amen. I'm aware that the devil's tempting me. And now I'm aware that I have power to say no to it. <sighs> when that evil day comes, what's, what do they call the evil day? When temptation, desire, and opportunity meets. That's called the evil day. What are you going to do then? Are you going to use at all this? Prepared to fight off that one pink? That pink pain? If this is all, if this is all infiltrated in you, you'd be able to go. Mm -hmm. I ain't going there. <laughs> but if you don't have that kind of power, it's like hmm, nobody knows what I just, the devil just tempted me with, and we ain't telling nobody. And it's it's in us, right? And it's in us, and it builds, and we end up what? Setting it up. How we're going to be able to carry it out? Because it's all secret, and the devil keeps pink. Paying it and paying until it actually gives birth to you. Ah, and do it. Does he do that with Christians? Absolutely. Does he do that with me? All the time. I get up in the morning and the devil says, John, you just go back to the way you were. It was easier. Then I'm thinking, really? That was easier living a life of deception and evil? No. No. But the devil, the devil tries to make this Christian life thinking that this is harder than living that way, yeah. than living a lie. Oh. 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 Think about, think about when you, when you do something, play it all out till the end, after it's all done. And then you'll say, I don't know if I want to go down that road. It's all good in the beginning, but in the end it brings what? Death. I think I'm going to stay on this road, because this is the road that leads to what? Life. Life. Amen. And I know many of us have been down that road that leads to death. That's why we are now on the road that leads to life. Amen. You ain't sitting in Bible study because everything was going great for you. Amen. You're sitting in Bible study because all hell was breaking loose in your life and you had no other way to turn but to look up and say, all right, God, I'm going to trust you because everything else failed me. I'm going to try you up. <laughs> I can't fix myself. At the end of the day, you're still stuck with you and your choices. And you're going to say, Who, remember Paul says, who's going to deliver me from this body of sin and death in Romans 7, that fight that we have going on? Yeah. Oh, thank God, it's in my Lord and Savior, Jesus yes. Christ. And who's my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? The Word became flesh. Your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Look, I've been, I've been through everything else already. And this is the only thing that gives me a reprieve from me. Amen. Is this. Amen. Nothing else can stop it. No. Only God's Spirit. Can stop me from wanting to satisfy me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, right? 
when, when, when you understand that Jesus is available 24-7, because when the devil comes calling, mm -hmm. you ain't calling nobody. Mm. When he comes calling, the only one you have 24-7 who lives in you is Jesus. So why not take him along on the trip? You know what I mean? Instead of saying, oh, I don't know if I believe in that. <clears throat> well, you better believe in something or you're going to fall for anything. The truth of God's word will set you free from you. You can blame your problems on everything else and everybody else, but it all comes down to you and the choices that we make in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You start reading the Bible and coming to Bible study, you start making the right choices. Say, hey, I ain't going there tonight. On Friday night, I'm going to Bible study. Bible study. People think you're nuts. <laughs> no. The people that are nuts, that are the ones that are going out 2, 3 in the morning, ain't nothing good happening. <laughs> yeah. Nothing happening 2, 3 in the morning. Those are the ones that are nuts. They think that you're nuts because you're reading God's Word. How can this be bad for you? <laughs> How could reading the Bible be bad? The world says, watch out for them people that read the Bible. They're weird. Have you lo ever looked at what people do when they're stoned? Yeah. Talk yes. about weed. <laughs> and, and people think that nobody sees them. Yeah. They're out on the boat all over through the night. Yeah. Nobody knows what I'm doing, really. <laughs> I'd much rather be here with my brothers and sisters. The Amen. result is going to be a lot better. Amen. 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 It's a, good, it's a good choice you made tonight by coming here, yeah, trust me. Amen. Now, if you keep making them choices, eventually it'll come full circle and your life will improve. Amen. Now, do I feel like I'm always improved? No, but I know one thing's for sure. My sin debt has been removed. Amen. Mm -hmm. I don't have to carry the burden or the weight of my past with me anymore. Amen. And I do not have to identify myself with who I used to be. Yes. I can now identify myself as a blood-bought child of the King. Amen. Heaven is my home. Get off me, devil. Amen. John, you stay home today. Because ain't nothing good if you take over. Amen? Amen? There's so much power in this word. Now look what it says. Verse 9. The creator of all things that kept secret from the beginning. God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display all his wisdom. Verse 10. And its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in heavenly places. This was the eternal plan which carried out through Christ Jesus. Because of Christ and our faith in him, Listen to this. I mean, I don't have to go to a priest or church anymore to go into his presence. No, it says, because of Jesus and believing in him and our faith in him, I can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. Mm -hmm. Look, it don't matter how bad you were today. You can still boldly and confidently go into God's presence because he now dwells within you because you believe in Jesus. Thank you. Because if you're all honest with yourself, none of us feel deserving enough to even talk to God. Right. After what we think, say, and do in the course of one day. Yeah. You know, I might be on the road not saying much, but I'll tell you what, I'm driving, I'm thinking some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Just because it ain't, but it, God's getting hold of it though, you see? Yes. Now it's not coming out of my mouth, I'm thinking it. Sooner or later, I'm going to be thinking of heavenly things, and I won't be think, thought about at all. Amen. This Amen. is how we remove things slowly. Amen. First, I got to put the zipper on. The white screen. Go. I'll tell you what. God and molds and shapes me through life. As soon as I get up and get in the car and go to work, it's all a challenge from there on in. Mm -hmm. And the test begins. 
And you know what? If you fail, God says, that's okay, John. I'm going to put the school bus, the police officer, and the traffic in front of you again tomorrow. <laughs> if you can't learn to accept that you will be miserable, you ain't never getting rid of the traffic, you ain't never getting rid of the school bus, and you ain't never getting rid of the police. <laughs> so whether you can learn to live with them and accept them, and then you'll be what? Happy. It ain't going away. I'm saying, hey, you know what? I might as well just enjoy the trip because it ain't going nowhere. Right. Nope. Amen. The only thing that changes is my perception. You see, when you understand God's word, say, no, that, that's not changing. I am. This is designed to change me, not the traffic, not the police, and not the school bus, and not the person next to you you don't like. <laughs> it's designed to change you. And until you understand that and start actually accepting that, you are going to be one miserable misrepresentation of Jesus Christ. And I don't care how long you've been coming to church. Because this coming to church do not change you. It does not change you. Coming to church gives you the information so you can go put it into practice. Amen. It's like going in the batting cage getting really good at hitting baseball, and then never joining the team. Right. But you can hit the ball. Right. So God cleans us up so he can what? Use us. Amen. To what? Help clean up the devil's world. Amen. Help it. By what? By trying to force everybody to come to the cross? No. no. By showing Christ in you and through you through the adversities that go on in your life. When somebody miserable comes up against you, when somebody's testing your patience and you can be kind and patient and loving to them, that displays Christ. Amen. How many of us need that? How many of us need patience? Hello. <laughs> How many of us need to be more kind? How many of us need to be more loving? It's easy to love someone who loves you. How do you love somebody that doesn't like you? That's how you know it's only to God's spirit. You can't do that. Yeah. And if you understand God's unconditional love for you, you can turn around and you can love yourself. Because if you can't be kind and loving to yourself, you can't be kind and loving to people. Amen. You cannot give something you do not possess. Amen. Most of us are hard on ourselves. So if we're hard on ourselves and unloving and unforgiving, guess how we are with other people? Hard, unloving, and unforgiving. But if we understand what Jesus does to us, he's gentle and humble and he's patient with me. Even when I'm thinking nasty or even when I'm wanting to do something that's wrong, he's still saying, it's okay, John, I love you. Come to me. I'm going to help you get, get through that. Try doing that with someone that's rough, that's rough with you or mean to you. See if I'm going to call them again. <laughs> right? You let somebody go, they don't wave. <laughs> they could have at least said, thank you. Boy, that's... Not, Jesus healed ten lepers, remember, in the Bible? Only one came back and said, thank you. Did he say, you other mind that didn't come and thank me? Back to leprosy. <laughs> no, 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 it didn't matter. No. He did it because it was the right thing to do. He was being kind and loving to hurting sick people. Look, be kind and loving to yourself because you're a hurting sick person. That's why Jesus came. If you can't be kind and loving to yourself, you can't be kind and loving to anybody. And it all starts where? In church. Amen. In here with each other. Unity. This is why he gave us the church. So we can practice that here. And you see it not getting practiced in church. You see people biting each other in church. People are saying, oh, well, why not to go to church? Yeah. There's people in my city that don't come. Sad. Bad misrepresentation of what God is doing in our lives. Or if you, is God doing anything in your life? Ask yourself that question. Is he? Or well, you just come in here playing around saying, I'm just coming. Or is he doing something in you? Or well, you just coming to show up? Are you coming here to show up or are you coming here to grow up? Amen. You tell me. Amen. 
I hope you're coming here to grow up, because this right. showing up ain't going to do jack for you in that world. Right. Not. It really ain't. People think that they can keep coming to church, and that's going to change them, and it doesn't. What changes us? The word. Putting the doctrine into practice. Hallelujah. When I go out there and that guy cuts me off, I'm going to thank Jesus for him. Why? Because he cut me off for a reason, probably to save me from harm down the road. Amen. Or maybe I was going too fast. Amen. Ah, it goes back on you. That's right. We've got a lot of learning to do, don't we? That's why we've got to keep coming to church. Amen. Now look what it says. I love this. Look at verse 13. So please don't lose heart. Because of my trials here. I'm suffering for you, so you should feel honored. Look, we're going to suffer here. It's part of the Christian walk. Please, I'm trying to teach you something. Suffering is part of life. Depression is part of life. Sadness is part of life. Extreme highs are part of life. Extreme lows are part of life. Us not paying attention to things are part of life. I don't pay attention to something I'm not interested in. How about you? Amen. You give me something I'm interested in, boy, I'm right on it. These are all things that are just part of our lives, and we just don't want to deal with them. But God tells me, I'm going to give you all the power you need to deal with these things, so you have the ability to what? Keep growing through them. Look what it says. When I think of all this, verse 14, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, look at this, unlimited resources. How many of us need unlimited resources? All of us. Right? You know, you go to the bank and your resources are limited. <laughs> yeah. Right? But sooner or later, the resource runs out. Well, after all them resources run out, guess what? There's more resources in here. Amen. Look what it says. Look at verse 16. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources that he will give you more money. <laughs> oh, people pray for money. Uh. And I want this, and I want that, and I want a better job, and I want a better life, and I want a bigger house, and I want a better car. That does not give you any inner strength. It gives you headaches and responsibilities. You're praying for the wrong stuff. When you change and start praying for the right stuff, you're not going to be praying for that stuff anymore. Lord, I don't want the camper that's going to sit in the driveway and right. get flat tires and get all chalky. I don't want the boat that's only going to go in the water once a year Then I'm going to have to get rid of it because I can't start it anymore because I haven't used it. <laughs> yeah. And I still got to pay for it. Lord, give me a smaller house because that big house I bought, I just can't take care of it anymore. Most people, when they get older, downsize. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they spend all their life getting this. Then they get old 